Hello, I am Marcus Sabatello from Danube Tech. We're starting a new series of video episodes to explore various aspects of decentralized identifiers or DITs. And today we start with the most important piece of functionality that DITs have to offer, which is DIT resolution. DIT resolution is the process of obtaining a DIT document for a given DIT. And perhaps this sounds a bit dry, technical, maybe boring, but if you think about it, this is actually a very exciting concept because this is what really establishes a link between the physical identity and the digital identity. DITs are basically digital addresses, which we can use to name or to refer to subjects in the physical world, such as individuals, organizations and things. And then DIT resolution is the process of obtaining the technical metadata, which is needed for interacting with those subjects in the digital world. And uh, this fundamental functionality, this capability, makes it possible to establish connections and relationships in the digital world, makes it possible to exchange messages and to share data. And with that, we are able to establish higher level concepts such as reputation and trust. Whenever we exchange verifiable credentials, we need to use DIT resolution in order to discover the metadata which is required for verifying the credential and the exchange between an issuer and a holder in the verifier. Whenever we want to establish a DITCOM connection or when we engage in an OpenID Connect transaction, then DIT resolution can be used for obtaining the cryptographic data needed to establish authenticity and security and encryption of the transactions. If we want to connect to a decentralized web node or an agent, then DIT resolution makes it possible to discover the technical endpoint for making these connections possible. So DIT resolution is really a very fundamental idea and piece of functionality that enables a lot of higher level protocols and applications and services. It is what really makes it possible to interact and conduct transactions in the digital world. Looking at the architecture of DIT resolution, there are basically three components that matter. There's of course the DIT resolver, then there are the verifiable data registries where the DITs really exist, and then there are clients which invoke the DIT resolver. The job of the DIT resolver is of course to resolve the DIT and to look up the associated DIT document. And there's not one way of doing that. There's a lot of diversity there and this is really where the, the superpower of DITs and DIT resolution lies. There's an abstraction layer and it is really up to the individual DIT method to define how that works. The DIT method defines the syntax of the DIT and it defines how exactly you get from the DIT to the DIT document. This can be done in many different ways. Sometimes this is an entirely local process and uh, sometimes this involves connecting to a blockchain and retrieving data from the blockchain. Sometimes it involves web servers or all kinds of other underlying infrastructure. It's also interesting and important to understand that the DIT document is sometimes stored in plain text in one of these verifiable data registries, but sometimes it's also more of a, a more dynamic virtual data structure. So what matters is not how it is stored and how it is obtained from the verifiable data registry, but what matters is this abstract interface that says that the resolver, given a DIT, it can somehow look up the associated DIT document. And uh, pretty much the same is true also for the interaction between the client and the resolver. When the client invokes the resolver, again, there's not one concrete way how this has to be implemented. This is not a, a specific client-server protocol, for example, as it is in, in DNS, let's say. But this is also an abstract interface. And again, this could be a local process. This could be just the client calling a local library, which might be included in the same piece of software. But um, this could also be a remote service, right? A client can also connect to a remote DIT resolver over protocols such as HTTPS or DITCOM. And this, of course, has various uh, implications and uh, security aspects that are important to understand. What's also really interesting here is that when the client invokes the resolver, of course, it transmits uh, the DIT, but it can also include 
additional options, resolution options in the request to the resolver. And when the resolver returns the DIT document, it can return not only the DIT document, but also metadata on one hand, metadata about the DIT document, and also metadata about the resolution process. So this interface, the ability to pass back and forth, not just the DIT and the DIT document, but also options and metadata, this enables quite a bit of potential additional functionality beyond just the plain DIT resolution. This could make it possible, for example, to transform the DIT document between different representations, such as JSON and D or CBOR. It can make it possible to support different uh, key formats, such as Base58 or JWK. It can uh, instruct the resolver uh, to perform caching, to perform some validation steps before returning it to the client. So there's a lot of room for additional functionality and innovation. And uh, now let's look at some concrete examples, some actual DITs and uh, DIT documents to see what that really looks like. So to show how some of this works, we will be using our platform GoDD, which is basically a hosted service for performing DIT resolution and some other DIT related functions. Again, it's important to point out that this is only one way how DIT resolution can be performed. DIT resolution is an abstract process that can come in many shapes and forms, including by using hosting services such as this, but there are also open source tools that can either be self-hosted or libraries and SDKs that can be integrated with applications and services to perform the DIT resolution function. But for the purpose of demonstration, I will be using this and uh, resolve function is really very easy you basically put in a did there are also some examples that I can try out I will uh, choose one or did from the did indie method in this case from the ID union test network and I can resolve this easily here and uh, the platform here will show me the result which consists of course of the did document uh, following the standard format but uh, did resolution also returns metadata including document metadata about the did document and resolution metadata about the resolution process it's perhaps even more interesting to look at this on the command line so i will show this using a set of uh, curl calls and uh, resolve a few more did methods you can see I'm basically executing an HTTP GET request against a URL which consists of a DIT resolver endpoint and then the DIT which is appended here. And uh, this is what we call the HTTP binding for DIT resolution. If we execute DIT resolution over a remote HTTP service, which again is just one way how DIT resolution can work, then the HTTP binding is being used. And if I execute this command, then uh, again it will it will return the result consisting of a the document plus the resolution metadata plus the document metadata i'll try this with a few more dits uh, this was the epsi now from european blockchain service infrastructure i will try this with uh, the web method uh, which follows the same the same interface and i will also try this with an ion did from uh, from the did ion method on the test network and again it's pretty much the same structure uh, behind the scenes the resolver consists of what we call a set of drivers right so each did method is very different some of them use blockchains and some of them don't but the interface here is always the same so no matter what did we pass in over this http binding the result follows a similar structure. Um, there are many more things that can be done over this HTTP binding when calling a DID resolver. I will only mention one of them today, which is that uh, DID documents can come in different uh, representations and media types. And it's possible when calling this API to pass in an accept header to specify the media type of the representation of the DID document that I would like to receive. Uh, one such media type is application slash DID plus LD plus JSON. And you will see now what I receive is not the entire 
data resolution result consisting of the data document and the metadata, but I'm actually only getting back uh, the data document itself. Now the interesting thing is that uh, if I try a different media type such as did plus uh, Cboil, for example, then uh, the resolver can return the did document in Cboil binary format. And um, as I said, there are many more things that can be done, for example, passing additional resolution options, passing certain uh, parameters, did URLs, and uh, we will cover that in future episodes because there are really a lot of additional features and additional functionality that can be shown. All right, so this is it for today. To summarize, we first discussed a little bit the importance of DIG resolution and how it is really a foundational building block that acts as a basis for a lot of higher level protocols and applications and services. We then explored the uh, high level architecture involving, of course, DIT resolvers and clients and DIT methods. And then we looked at some concrete examples and concrete DITs and the documents to see what they actually look like. And uh, this is it. If you have any comments or questions or other feedback, please let us know. And next time we will look at how DITs can be created and updated and deactivated. Thank you.